Okay, everybody, we need to talk about the death of a 17-year-old in the United States back in 2013, and his name was Kendrick Johnson. And to show you what happened, I've got CNN reports from back then, and I've put together all the key information, and there's not much more I can say about it, and you'll see why I had to make this video, so let's get into this. I wish this on no one. Kenneth and Jacqueline Johnson knew something was wrong when their 17-year-old son Kendrick did not come home from school January 10th. Come to Lowndes High School now. There's a de dead body out here. Okay, where at, sir? Lowndes High School in the old gym. The next day, Kendrick was found upside down in a rolled cheerleading mat like these. I just got weak, nervous. And Investigators said it appeared Kendrick, who was 5 foot 10, was reaching for a shoe that had fallen into the center of a six-foot mat, and he got stuck. A tragic accident. Said it was no foul play. He had no bruises, no nothing. Did you believe that? No. And you still don't believe it? No, I don't. They think the story about the mat is a cover-up. More than 100 days after Kendrick's body was discovered, scores of interviews and hours of investigation. The Georgia Bureau of Investigation determined Kendrick accidentally smothered to death. We examined all the alternatives that were presented to us, and the only one that fit the uh, physical evidence and the forensic evidence and the testimonial evidence that we received was this as an accident. Hours after the release of the report, As scheduled, another rally. In statements released by Lowndes County Sheriff's Office, students wrote, we always leave our shoes inside the mats during class, but to retrieve the shoes, we tilt the mats over and get the shoes from the bottom. This is Kendrick inside the mat. His family's attorney gave us this photo. Detectives think Kendrick reached for a black gym shoe from the top of the six-foot mat, slipped into the center, and got stuck while no one was around. And a relative says the shoes in this picture are his too. The official cause of death is positional asphyxia. In other words, he was smothered by his own body weight. Said it was no foul play. He had no bruises, no nothing. Did you believe that? No. According to the paramedics report, there was bruising noted to right side jaw, although there was no mention of bruising in the state's autopsy report. Well, I didn't know what to think. Coroner Bill Watson was called to the scene five hours after detectives had arrived, although Georgia law requires investigators to call the coroner as soon as a body is found. The body had been moved. The scene, in my opinion, had been compromised. It's a very time-consuming process to basically work your way from the outside in. Once our investigators got to the deceased, uh, the coroner was contacted immediately. In May, when we asked Watson about his concerns, he told us that he and the sheriff had taken care of the discrepancy internally. I really feel he's murdered. The sheriff's office stands behind its investigation. Johnson says he won't stop until he finds out who killed his son. Wow. Victor Blackwell joins me here again. Thank you for staying on the story. Sure. And two questions. One, when we saw the photo, you could see his feet and his socks, and those were shoes. Yes. Next to his feet. His shoes, those gray and orange shoes, and that's a question the family asks. If he dove into this mat, how did the shoes end up in next the mat after him, next to him? They are mentioned in this report as part of the narrative, but the sheriff's office and the... Uh, uh, crime lab. They don't mention those shoes as part of the theory of how he died. Victor Blackwell joins me now. It's not just the Johnsons who are questioning the investigation. The, the Loudons County coroner says the scene was compromised. How, how so? Well, first, Anderson, uh, the coroner, Bill Watson, says that law in Georgia is that the coroner is to be called immediately once a body is found. We checked, and that's true. Kendrick's body was found at about 10 a.m. He was called at about a quarter to three, and he says that once he arrived, the body had been moved. Now, the sheriff's office says that they did nothing wrong on that scene. We also received an email from him a few days after our interview on camera in which he told us that. I want to put up part of the email, Anderson, and he writes in that email, I would appreciate it if you would destroy this interview with me. I do not want this to be shown whatsoever. I feel that our situation should not be aired. Now, we have aired that interview here on CNN, and of course, that request only fueled the skepticism from the Johnsons and their supporters.
It's the only video shot inside the Lowndes High School gym the day 17-year-old Kendrick Johnson was found dead. And with his parents' approval, we're showing it for the first time. Lowndes County, Georgia investigators say Kendrick's death was a tragic accident, that he climbed onto these rolled gym mats to reach for this shoe at the center of one mat, slipped, got stuck upside down, and died. County officials say the blood in this photo spilled after Kendrick's heart had stopped pumping hours after he had died. But Kendrick's parents say the photo and the video show something else. There's enough evidence to show that Kendrick was murdered. CNN has exclusively obtained the 15-minute video in nearly 700 photos of the scene taken by Lowndes County investigators. And for the first time, Kendrick's parents, Kenneth and Jacqueline Johnson, are ready to look at them, including these pictures of orange and black gym shoes investigators found just yards from Kendrick's body. Did these shoes belong to Kendrick? No. When you look at these shoes that were at the scene, what stands out to you? The blood on the shoe. But investigators say tests show the stains are something other than blood, so the shoes were not collected as potential evidence. I don't understand why. You didn't CNN took the photos to independent private investigator and former FBI special agent Harold Copus. If you were on this scene, would this have been something you would have left? No, bag and tag. There's no indication investigators ever even looked for the owner of the shoes or this hooded sweatshirt found a few feet from Kendrick's body. And if you look real close, there's something on this particular cuff. And then the question is, was it blood? Did you test it? According to the crime lab report, no. They know something happened in that gym and they don't want it to come out. For the Johnsons, there's no stronger indicator than this photo. It's of what appears to be blood dripping down a wall. Here's what Lowndes County Lieutenant Stride Jones told CNN about that wall in May. And we tested it, and it was blood. And we did DNA testing, and it was not the blood of Kendrick Johnson. If it wasn't Kendrick blood, who blood was it? Did you ever find out who it was or any involved? No, as, as of from? now, we haven't, no. But okay. it doesn't appear to be related to our crime in any way. What do you think about the, the, the decision not to test it further? You can't explain it. If you're running the crime scene, then you're going to say that's potential evidence. Obviously, we're going to check this out and find out who does it belong to. This is an athletic gym. I mean, obviously, this is where they conduct uh, various athletic classes and instructions at. A kid couldn't have scraped their knee or arm or something and got that much blood on the wall. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. Six impacts. Uh, the opinion of our crime scene personnel, um, after looking at it closely, the blood appeared as if it had been there for an extended period of time. It, it was, didn't appear to be very fresh. School gym. There is no way that uh, they would allow whoever was supposed to clean this gym to leave that blood on that wall. And there's the question, why was there no blood where they expected to see lots of blood? Remember the photo of that shoe investigators say was inches below Kendrick's head? Look at it again. If he was inside the mat, reaching for that shoe, inside this tool, reaching for the shoe, and the shoe is beneath him, why isn't that shoe covered with blood? And what do you think about that shoe not being covered with blood? Do you? It was, it was placed there. I don't believe this was an accident. I think this young man met with foul play. CNN has hired Grant Fredericks and his team at Forensic Video Solutions to analyze the hundreds of hours of surveillance from Lowndes High School. Although he does not believe the jumpy video is the result of editing, he says there are some other major problems. Those files are not original files. They're not something that an investigator should rely on for the truth of the video. Uh, they've been altered in a number of ways, primarily in image quality. Uh, and likely in dropped information, information loss. There are also a number of files that are corrupted because they've not been processed correctly and they're not playable. So um, I can't say why they were done that way, but they were not done correctly and they were not done um, thoroughly. So we're missing information. Frederick says that's likely due to how investigators acquired the surveillance video. Right now what they've done is they have left it up to the school district to define what it is they want to provide the police. And I think that probably is a mistake. According to Lowndes County Sheriff's Office incident reports, a detective watched a portion of the surveillance video the day Kendrick Johnson was found. 
Then he asked the school board's information technology worker for a copy of the surveillance video for the entire wing of the school with the old gym for the last 48 hours. Five days later, that IT worker provided a hard drive, and according to the incident report, the detective verified it contained the requested surveillance video. So the investigator's responsibility is to acquire the entire digital video recording system and then have their, their staff define what they want to obtain. You don't want somebody who might be party to the responsibility to make the decision as to what they provide the police. And after hours of analysis, Fredericks questions whether Lowndes County Schools provided all of the surveillance video from the old gym to investigators. There is a hole of time where none of the cameras um, provide any record that, that I've been provided. Fredericks has all the camera angles and all the video released by the Lowndes County Sheriff's Office. There are four cameras in the gym that records motion from when the lights turn on in the morning until when the lights are turned off at night except for the area of interest. The moments before Kendrick Johnson enters the gym. Look at what happens to the recordings from these four cameras in the gym. The time is recorded with the video. The first camera captures images from the start of the day until 12.04 p.m. Then nothing. It picks up again at 1.09 p.m. There's consistent surveillance from the second camera until 11.05 a.m., then it stops and picks up again more than two hours later at 1.15 p.m. The third camera also drops at 11.05 a.m., it picks up again at 1.16 p.m. And from the final camera, there's surveillance until 12.04 p.m., no recording for more than an hour, then it picks up again at 1.09 p.m. I would absolutely expect there to be some record of that activity and we don't have any here. Here's why Fredericks would have expected the motion activated system to record during that time. During that hour and five minutes, several students are seen walking into and out of the old gym from the surveillance camera just outside the gym door. We count seven male students and three of them walk into the gym within three minutes prior to Kendrick Johnson walking in. I can't tell you whether there was um, uh, no information recorded in the digital video system uh, or whether somebody made an error and didn't capture it or whether somebody just didn't provide it. When surveillance in the gym resumes at 109, we see just these few frames of Kendrick Johnson running in the gym. Here's that moment from all of the cameras in the gym, although there's a record from only two, and the camera just outside the door. Notice the hall camera timestamp appears to be 10 minutes behind and there's no confirmation either time matches the exact time of day. It is the last time his image is captured on video. For the next hour, there are multiple gaps in the video surveillance in the gym. And that is crucial. It's a really important time. Well, it really is the only option to answer the question, really what happened. And there's no video showing the initial discovery of a body in the gym. The next time we see Kendrick Johnson is the following day when he's being wheeled out of the gym in a body bag. I am 911. Where's your emergency? Yes, I'm calling. My son had um, gone and come home from school today, and he still haven't got here. Okay, what's your son's name? Kendrick Johnson. That was January 10th, 2013. Lowndes County Lieutenant Stride Jones spoke with CNN in May, the day after the sheriff's office closed its case. It was not a rash decision that was uh, leapt to by any means. I mean, we, we've drawn this out, um, done a thorough investigation, and, and we think we've covered all bases. As the FBI conducts its interviews, CNN is taking an in-depth look at the accounts of the first interviews in the Kendrick Johnson case, conducted by the Lowndes County Sheriff's Office. And we've interviewed uh, slightly over 100 and something people during this investigation. That, that included students, teachers, uh, some parents that, uh, you know, had access during the uh, time period of question there. We examined every incident report included in the 522 page investigative file. According to the file, Lowndes County investigators interviewed 111 people, including seven school employees, three medical responders and more than 90 students. It started on January 11th when the Kendrick Johnson was found at Lowndes High School. The file reveals sheriff's investigators interviewed 18 people the day Kendrick Johnson was found. However, the documents reveal most interviews occurred months later. Here's the breakdown. Investigators interviewed 33 people in the month of January. 
just four in February, one in March, and 72 of the 111 interviews were conducted in April, one more in May. Remember, Kendrick's body was found January 11th. The first emergency medical technicians called to the scene initially for a reported cardiac arrest were interviewed April 17th. The paramedic who noticed bruising to Kendrick's jaw and considered the gym to be a crime scene was interviewed April 18th. The janitors who cleaned the gym where the body was found yard from these blood streaks on a wall were among the last to be interviewed on April 26th. Local investigators believe the blood is unrelated. However, they've never found whose blood it was or how it got there. And according to their report, the investigators did not ask the janitors about that blood. And look again at the school surveillance video. This was the last time Kendrick Johnson was seen alive. There were other students in the gym, but the investigators' reports have no record of interviews with any of these students. You know, Victor, one, one thing I, I hadn't noticed, and actually a viewer uh, who, who works in gyms noticed and tweeted me about this uh, the other day, was that it looks like all the mats are rolled really tightly, except for the one that Kendrick was found in. That seems to have had a large uh, opening. In June, at his parents' request, Kendrick's body was exhumed and taken to Florida for a second independent autopsy. This time, the findings were dramatically different. The report, obtained exclusively by CNN, cites the cause of death as unexplained apparent non-accidental blunt force trauma. Blows to the neck, not an accident. The Johnsons hired Dr. Bill Anderson to conduct an independent second autopsy. In that autopsy, Anderson told the Johnsons he'd found evidence that Kendrick died as the result of a blow to the neck and not accidental asphyxia after slipping into a rolled gym mat at school, as investigators in Georgia had said. But what Dr. Anderson did not find shocked them. When we got the body uh, for the second autopsy, that organs, the heart, lungs, liver, etc., were not with the body. The brain? The brain. They were all absent. Every organ from the top of Kendrick's head to his pelvis, gone. And his family had no idea. So CNN contacted the two entities that had custody of Kendrick's body and access to his organs. The Georgia Bureau of Investigation, which conducted the first autopsy in January, and Harrington Funeral Home, which the Johnsons chose to embalm and prepare Kendrick's body for burial days later. A spokeswoman for the state tells CNN after its autopsy, the organs were placed in Johnson's body, the body was closed, then the body was released to the funeral home. In a letter to the Johnson's attorney, Harrington Funeral Home owner Antonio Harrington denies he received Kendrick's organs. He writes in part, his internal organs were destroyed through natural process and henceforth were discarded before the body was sent back to Valdosta. How was the family's autopsy doctor able to determine the cause of death then? Yeah, I asked him, if the organs aren't there, how can you determine how uh, Kendrick died? Well, he says that Essentially, blunt force trauma was not in the organs. It was in the right side jaw, which was actually noted as bruised during the paramedics report on the day he was found. He dissected the jaw, which had not been dissected in the first autopsy, found bleeding under the skin. He dissected the left side as well, did not find the bleeding, and he concluded that that bruising indicated, also with the bleeding, that there was blunt force trauma, that Kendrick took that blow to the neck. Georgia Bureau of Investigation, which did the first autopsy, says they put the organs back into Kendrick Johnson's body, closed the body, sent it to Harrington Funeral Home. The funeral home says the organs never came with the body, but they take it a step further. The funeral home says that GBI, Georgia Bureau of Investigation, discarded the organs because they were destroyed through some natural process that Harrington still has not explained. But late today, we uh, now have a copy of this letter that was sent to the Johnsons. It's from the Funeral Services Board. Only CNN has it. And I want to read uh, just the line in the conclusion here. The board has exhausted all available investigative avenues at its disposal, and no determination could be made whether the organs were transferred to the funeral establishment with the body. See what I mean? How crazy is all that? And so not only does this family have to go through the pain of losing their son, but then all of this on top of it. So it was declared an accident. 
and the coroner wasn't called for hours. And when he did finally get there, he said that the scene was compromised. Well, until that discrepancy was dealt with internally. And then you had evidence that wasn't collected. And then evidence that was collected wasn't tested. And then you had missing surveillance footage. Key footage. And then you had some of the most important people not interviewed until the last minute. And then some of the most important questions weren't even asked. And then finally, the missing organs. And the shoes. Everything to do with all the shoes. Like that shoe that no one knew who it belonged to with that blood on it that wasn't tested. And how Kendrick's shoes were next to him, but not on his feet, somehow next to him. And how the shoe that he was supposedly reaching for that would have been underneath him didn't have any blood on it. And now I'm also making this video because the case has been reopened. And so I've got a news report to show you that's from about two weeks ago, so earlier November 2021. And the parents of Kendrick Johnson say that they're disappointed in the new investigation into their son's death. You may remember the South Georgia teen was found dead inside of a rolled up gym mat back in 2013. Yeah, that case was reopened earlier this year under a new sheriff and with new evidence and a possible recorded confession. Tonight, the Johnson sat down exclusively with CBS 46's Haley Mason to explain what has happened since. Kendrick Johnson's parents sat down with me to share their frustrations about the case but also their resolve, telling me that nothing will stop them from getting justice under the law in their son's death. They refuse to let his case go cold. You reopen it, but what are you going to do about it? Kendrick Johnson's parents say it's been more than seven months since their son's case has been reopened, and they're not satisfied. The 17-year-old, known as KJ, was found dead and bleeding, rolled up inside a gym mat inside the gym at Lowndes High School in Valdosta in January of 2013. A few classmates were investigated but never arrested. The family, community, and forensic professionals have all alleged a cover-up. We know Kendrick was murdered. We allegedly know who murdered Kendrick. The new Lowndes County Sheriff Ashley Polk, who was retired when Johnson died, vowed to reopen the case. He did in March. We haven't heard from the sheriff in what really since he opened the case. We talked with him maybe one or two times or more, a couple of more. In March of this year, the Johnsons say they obtained a possible recorded confession. They turned it over to detectives to be authenticated. Uh, what appears to be a Caucasian male uh, admitting to killing Kendra Johnson. The attorney knows we authenticated it. And they um, also know that we sent them 11, 13 questions we wanted answered from them by registered mail. They have not answered any of those questions. They have not been cooperative in the case. Got it up. Neatly wrapped up. We released the whole thing. And don't think the Johnsons will be happy when we do, but, you know, that's not my job to make people happy. My job is to put the truth out there, and I'll put the truth out. Let go of the investigation. Let someone come in way higher than his office to handle this investigation because your investigators is not going to uncover something that they helped cover up. Johnson's parents tell me they want the U.S. Justice Department to take over the case. Because we know it's going to break and we're going to find out exactly who all took part of what happened to Kendrick. All right, and to wrap this up, I completely agree with Kendrick's dad because you need a different department to do this investigation. You need someone higher up to investigate the people that were doing the investigation because you can't just have the same people looking into something that they could have very well covered up. And like, I know I'm not a big channel, but if someone that does know this family finds this video, you can tell them that there are people on the other side of the world that want justice for Kendrick. There are people in Australia that are saying that what happened here looks like a cover up. Thanks for watching.